this video, this video might actually be too much for most people. It will stretch beyond the bounds of credulity. Um, there's always been an issue since the ancient Egyptians, actually. The reconciliation, and of course, the abstraction of a field was certainly something different back then. Um, but uh, all the way back to the Egyptians and the ancient Greeks, reconciliation of fields and uh, that of uh, matter. This has been the um, the seeming duality, and there are no dualities in nature. A duality is only a construct of the limited mind of an ignorant individual with less than all the information. And this has always been the case. There are no dualities in nature. Every time I hear of a duality by uh, idiot scientists like wave-particle duality, I mean, I, I literally laugh my ass off. So how do we actually reconcile matter? Um, boy, this will really fuel all the people that think I'm in the Illuminati. This will, like, confirm it to them. <laughs> There's a lot of people that think I'm in the Illuminati. Um, reconciliation of matter and uh, fields. Um, this is a question I get asked all the time, and um, everything is incredibly simplex. Not simple, but certainly so simplex. How do I answer this one? Just open up your mind just for a second. And of course, I'm going to get a lot of comments on this particular video telling me that I'm absolutely full of it, but that I've really stepped over the edge. Um, uh, Maybe the word Fruit Loop will be used on me after making this video. However, all of this is not only well within the bounds of logic, it is actually hyperlogical from everything we know from observed phenomena and everything that I know about fields. Um, that fundamentally, of course, we know the fundamental particle upon which all matter is constructed is uh, hydrogen. Specifically, we're talking about protium, um, one proton. Of course, all the great experts of field theory, Maxwell, James, uh, James Kirk Maxwell, Tesla, Oliver Heaviside, um, Charles Proteus Steinmetz, they denied the notion that there was such thing as a charge-carrying particle, but that's a matter for another video. So, so all matter is based upon hydrogen. Okay. Now, optically observed phenomena, which have been, I think they've been optically observed now for well over 60 years, are galactic jets. They actually follow geomagnetic precession at the center of galaxies and other supermassive entities. And we know for a fact, and this is not up for debate, that these entities are actually ejecting billions and billions of tons of hydrogen. They're literally manifesting hydrogen from nowhere. Um, let's first talk about gamma. Oddly enough, I actually have a gamma emitter here on the table, just by happenstance. This is actually a thorium doped lens, which is emitting beta and gamma radiation. Gamma ra yes, yeah, this, this is a radioactive lens. Um, gamma radiation is uh, 2.5 million electrovolts to uh, generate uh, gamma radiation. Above that, of course, we have cosmic rays. Imagine a fact, and this is where it's going to become interesting. And if you just follow me really deep down the rabbit hole here, not anything insane, Mad Hatter, but uh, hyperlogical, and certainly following within platonic retroductive reasoning. It's actually hyperlogical. That somewhere around the threshold, well above what humans can create, somewhere around the threshold of 5 to 6 million electrovolts, we would have spontaneous creation of matter. Now, the only entities which can do this are these supermassive entities which are emitting billions of tons. Spontaneous generation, by the way. And then we'll actually explain what matter is, and that's where you're going to call me a lunatic. But you shouldn't. Spontaneous generation of matter. The fundamental building block of all matter is hydrogen. Protium, specifically. Absolutely all matter. Um... They say hydrogen or protium is stable, but stable is relative. I mean, human beings have a, have a life that is less than a uh, one one billionth of a cosmic blink within the the timeline of uh, of things that occur within the cosmos. So um, stable is relative. So let's just think for a second. 
what actually is matter? If all matter is reducible to hydrogen, and we know that spontaneous generation of hydrogen occurs in these super powerful massive entities, which are more massive than those of, say, proton and, uh, uh, excuse me, neutron stars and um, protostars, which are emitting enormous amounts of gamma radiation, like gamma ray bursts from stars. I mean, this is a known entity. That's been well known for, what, 120-some years now? Not, not, not that long. I think about, what, 90 years? Above that, we have spontaneous generation of matter. So a little bit more than twice that of a gamma ray radiation of 2.5 million electrovolts, or they call electron volts. So around 5 to 6 million, we'd have spontaneous, if human beings could create that, which we can't, we'd have the spontaneous generation of the proton. We'd have, we'd have helium production. Irreducibly, what this means, since we're talking about the electromagnetic spectrum, and this is where you're going to call me a lunatic, and you have to go down deep the rabbit hole, but this is all hyperlogical because there are no dualities in nature. There are no fields, and there, there is no matter on, on the other hand. To think that Mother Nature would deal in a duality. We have fields over here, electrical, magnetic, dielectric. Yeah. And matter over here is an absurdity. Dualities only exist within the minds of stupid humans, and humans are really, really stupid. We can therefore irreducibly say that since spontaneous hydrogen generation occurs somewhere around 5 to 6 million, speculatively, I could be off by a couple million electrovolts, occurs spontaneously, that matter itself fundamentally is nothing other than a stable form of light. Gamma radiation, of course, as you very well, I hope you know, is on the spectrum of uh, the electromagnetic, excuse me, is within the scale of electromagnetic spectrum, radio waves, visible. Uh, radiation, gamma rays. So what we're actually talking about is that fundamentally matter at its most elemental naked form, i.e. hydrogen, specifically protium, could be called hard light. <laughs> Literally a quasi-semi, excuse me, a semi-stable form of electromagnetic radiation. So powerful so that it has, we actually, by examining whether it be coaxial polarization or otherwise, as far as uh, electromagnetic radiation, we actually can deduce that uh, at such high energies that uh, the, energy, uh, the energy itself becomes so powerful that it becomes a stable entity wherein which its own field is able to sustain itself. It would be akin to every creature being unstable and vulnerable to its environment and immediately disappearing and blinking in and out of existence. But an entity so powerful, let's say, it was able to create an electromagnetic shell or cocoon around itself and have a stable existence for what human beings would think to be a perdurable eternity. But, of course, we think that hydrogen is stable. But stable relative to humans, of course, is fundamentally stable. No matter, of course, is stable. I mean, most everything has a half-life, and ultimately, too, hydrogen must uh, have a half-life, just not discernible by human beings. Protium, that is, not talking about uh, deuterium or tritium, which is a known entity. We're talking about the fundamental building blocks. So we know that spontaneous generation of hydrogen by billions and billions of tons, quite literally, possibly every second, in these supermassive entities, which are so powerful, and they actually occur at a geomagnetic precession, just like a top. Just like the geomagnetic precession or in magnetism, what we call the Lamour frequency, except at infinitely higher um, energy levels, somewhere around six, six plus million electrovolts. That means fundamentally that this, the very bottom of the rabbit hole, the reconciliation of fields and matter, is one thing, and that matter at its fundamental core, which is obviously so elemental hydrogen or protium, would be nothing other than, and this is, of course, a saying, something that I actually coined, and uh, it would be hard light. That seems kind of funny. It's actually both funny and accurate. Kind of like stable light or hard light. It would be no different than water. Imagine that most of the spectrum of water 
most of the it was imagine we had a spectrum of water most of it was steam section of it was a uh, liquid uh -huh. over here way way over here we had uh, a spectrum section of water which is solid and palpable which could be cut you know like ice cubes this is only a loose analogy but that is the reconciliation of fields and of matter the most fundamental building block of all matter is nothing other than an ultra high energy pulse perturbation at six seven it could be upwards it could be even 10 million electro volts I don't know I know it has to be above six million electro volts that matter is basically hard light <laughs> this is where you're gonna call me a crazy asshole but that is the only logical retroductive reconciliation of the seeming but wholly untrue because there are no dualities in nature between matter on one hand and fields on the other because that cannot exist the wisest minds on earth who have ever lived all of which have passed now at least most of which have passed would certainly affirm and reaffirm and reaffirm again that nature has no duality a duality is a contradiction kind of like uh, somebody with bipolar disorder that's always fighting within their own mind there, there is no such duality in nature there therefore can hence retroductively be no duality in cosmic mechanics and cosmic mechanics by definition is totality or in Greek, holos. It would be encompassing both the cosmos athitos and the cosmos nuitos. Absolutely everything in entirety. Or in the ancient Pali, they would call that sarve damas. Or in Prakrit, it would be sabe damas. That means that matter is nothing other than a super high energy form of electromagnetic radiation or what the common person calls light of course visible light is only a super super minuscule portion of electromagnetic spectrum we have infrared gamma radio waves yada 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 that means everything is light <laughs> this is where everybody's gonna he I knew he was an Illuminati everybody keeps telling me that That's the very bottom, well, not really the very bottom, but that's near the very bottom of the rabbit hole. And if you think I'm crazy, I know for a fact that the reasoning behind this video and the statements and conclusions there, too, are indeed extremely logical. Lux Everitas, thank you so much for watching. If you always like these videos, if you like these videos, you can always click the link below. And I explain this further in the fourth edition of my book, by the way, which is free. Um, if you like these videos, you can always click the link below, drop a buck or two. You tell me to jump off a cliff. You could call me a crazy lunatic. It doesn't really matter either way. The only thing I care about is wisdom. I do, however, have fundamental needs as far as uh, paying the gas bill. <laughs> paying the gas bill and whatnot, but uh, um, it's good to think. Thinking is a good thing. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, by the way, if anybody wants to talk about neutrons, I don't know if you know this or not, but like uh, it's called beta decay. Twelve minutes after a free neutron, there's no such thing really as a neutron particle. Twelve, I think it's roughly twelve minutes after a neutron particle release, say in uh, radiation or radioactivity. A neutron always becomes a proton, so even a neutron is a proton, so there is, therefore, thenceforth, uh, thusly, only one fundamental particle, of course, and that fundamental particle, the hydrogen or protium nucleus, is uh, a ultra-high energy form of uh, EM, or what the common layman would call light. Absolutely so. There is no matter and there is no fields. There is only this. 
Some people say, well, there's a head side of a coin and there's a tail side of the coin. And the wise person will say, no, you goddamn idiot, there's only the coin. <laughs> Lux Everetas.